Hey you guys, we're going to solve this system of linear equations using matrices. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you like it. Please subscribe to the channel and let's get started. So we've gone over this already, uh, but perhaps some of you may prefer to see it as a matrix like this. Some of you guys like to put a line through the equal signs like that. And then in our actual matrix, we simply just need to write down all of the coefficients of the variables inside the matrix. So we have those coefficients there. There, there are numbers with that x and the y. So we have a 1 with the x, a 3 with the y, a 2 with that x, and a negative 1 with the bottom y. And then we have what they equal, which is 5 and negative 4. So remember that the main idea with these is that as we work and perform our elementary row operations on these is that we want zeros here first which will then allow us to get just ones right here. And they can be negative ones, alright? So that's all we're going to try to do with these elementary row operations. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this uh, first equation, uh, once again, we're, we're looking to get a zero there with the three is. And how are we going to do that using elementary row operations? Well, what we can do is we can take row two in comparison to row one and see how that coefficient of y was negative one. If I take that negative one and multiply it by three, I'll have the opposite of this three, which is what we want, okay? So I'm going to take three multiply it by row 2, and then if I add it to row 1, then I will have a 0 right where that 3 is, okay? So in this new matrix here, for row 1, which I have in purple, I'm just going to take all the values of row 2 and add them to the corresponding values in row 1. So, first we have 2 times 3 plus the 1, which will give us a new value here, okay? So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7 right here. Now we're going to do the same thing with the y column. So negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, plus 3 would give us the 0 that we want right here. And we can put the line there. So we have that 0. Uh, next thing we'd want to do is to get a 0 where the 2 is on the second row here. So we want this to be a 0, right? So what are we going to have to do? Well, we need to compare that to row 1. And we can see row 1 is 1, so if I multiply it by 2, then I have the same coefficients, but I want them opposites, so I'll make that a negative. A negative 2 times row 1 and if I add that then to row 2, then I would get that 0, which is where I want it. But it will affect the y here. So I'm going to take 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus negative 1. And that would give me a negative 7 here. So we shouldn't forget about the equals, right? For row 1, we did 3 times row 2 and then added it to row 1 to find that value. So 3 times negative 4 plus 5, that would give us a negative 7 is what it looks like. And then for the second row, right, we got negative 2 times the 5 plus the negative 4, and that would give us a negative 14, OK? Now that we have those zeros, all we've got to do now is work with each individual row in order to find the final matrix, which will give us the answers as it turns out. And that's going to be very nice. So let's go ahead and make these a little bit bigger for us. So for row 1, yeah, I don't need to add or subtract anything to it. All I need is for this 7 to become a 1. So to do that, I would just take the 7 and I would divide it by 7. So in row 1, 7 divided by 7 is 1. 
0 divided by 7 is still 0, and negative 7 divided by 7, that would give us a negative 1. Now remember, in our original equations, we had this x column, y column, and then the answers right here. So this is our x, this is our y, and that equals this 1. Now notice, since y is 0, we could just say right here that x is negative 1. In the next row, uh, we can take row 2, and to make this negative 7, a 1, I would just divide it by itself, negative 7. So row 2 divided by negative 7. 0 divided by negative 7 is 0. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is 1. And negative 14 divided by 7 is 2. And again, since this is our x column, notice there is no x there. But we do have 1y. So 1y equals 2. And as an ordered pair, we would write that as negative 1, 2 like this. And that's our answer. Now be careful with these uh, elementary row operations. It can be easy to make a mistake in these. It's just a small mistake will throw you off a lot, okay? Uh, for example, maybe sometimes you forget to write the negative in here. Maybe instead of adding one of the values, you subtract it, okay? So be very careful with that. Uh, we need to check this, okay? So in the first equation, right, we had x, which is negative 1, plus 3 times y, which is 2, and that equals 5. Well, is this a true statement? 3 times 2 is 6, negative 1 plus 6, this needs to equal 5, and sure enough, 5 does equal 5, and this one checks off. So on the bottom equation, notice I've written that here. And we're just going to perform the operations, the order. Negative 2 minus 2. Does this equal negative 4? Yes, it does. And you can check all that with the calculator. This one checks off. So we know that our answer is correct. And we're good to go from there, okay? Uh, again, that's just for confidence, okay? I, I don't know that any of the teachers will force you to do this. But it's a good practice to get into because it helps to confirm, especially on a quiz or test, that your answer is correct. Thanks for watching this, guys. Uh, look out for other videos on matrices, and I hope they help you out.